In recent years, the distinction between desktop, gaming computers, and workstation class systems has blurred, especially when it comes to price and performance. But today, we'll take a look at a new single CPU system from Lenovo to see if workstation computers have now become more affordable. Hi everyone, I'm Mike the Media Man, and at the Creative Review Channel, we are trying to bridge that gap between the creative process and the technical requirements. I've worked for many years in the visual effects and animation industries for companies like EA Games, ILM and Lucasfilm, DreamWorks and Warner Brothers, and I've worked my way up from desktop support all the way to global head of IT for a multinational studio. And I just wanted to share some of my experiences to help our viewers make informed decisions when it comes to equipment purchases. So you may be asking yourself, what is a workstation computer? It's something that's been classified that it's faster, it's more powerful, it has more CPUs and more CPU cores, and it has a ton of RAM installed. But today's standard computers have up to 16 cores, can support 128 gigs of RAM, have some of the highest CPU clock speeds in the market. And in the past, an entry-level workstation could cost Artisan Studios $5,000 or more and still not supply the amount of computing power required by experts and professional artists. So this leaves some of the smaller or boutique studios to use DIY or white boxes due to their limited budgets. And most of the larger studios are using one of the top tier workstations for one of the three major manufacturers because they have larger equipment budgets. But Lenovo is changing the landscape of computers used in the creative industry by offering game-changing power, reliability, and speed all in a single CPU workstation. In the third quarter of this year, Lenovo announced a new P620 ThinkStation, and this beast is powered by the ultimate processor for the professional artist. Lenovo has partnered up with AMD to offer the world's first and only AMD Threadripper Pro workstation. The P620 offers a dual CPU computing experience and a single processor system. But what does this mean to creative studio and content artists? Well, first of all, the ThinkStation P620 offers high clock speeds and can be configured with a 12, a 16, a 32, or even a 64-core AMD Threadripper Pro processor. Studios now have an option to purchase a workstation that will grow with the artist and evolve with the project, all while staying within a limited budget. So please stick around till the end of the video, and I will be discussing how you can perform a few simple upgrades to the P620 to increase performance and get a better return on your investment, for not only today, but for the future as well. This system here was supplied to me by Lenovo Malaysia, and they were very gracious in loaning me this workstation and allowing me to do some benchmark and testing on the system. And if you'd like to see some more of Lenovo's products, I'll put a link in the comments section below. Let's take a closer look at the four different configurations of the P620 offered by Lenovo. The entry-level system is powered by AMD's Ryzen Threadripper Pro 3945WX, a 12-core, 24-thread CPU with a base clock of 4.0 GHz and a boost clock speed of 4.3 GHz, and a total L2, L3 cache size of 70 MB. As with all the P620 configurations, this system has 128 lanes of PCIe Gen 4 and supports 8 DIMMs across 8 memory channels with a total capacity of 2 TB of RAM and a total TDP of 280 watts. The mid-level configuration is powered by the 3955WX, a 16-core, 32-thread CPU with a base clock of 3.9 GHz and a boost clock speed of 4.3 GHz and a cache size of 72 MB. For the higher-end systems, there are two configurations. First, we have the 32-core, 64-thread, 3975WX, a 3.5 GHz for the base clock speed and a boost speed of 4.2 GHz with 144 MB of cache. And for the top-end system, there is the 3995WX. This is a 64-core, 128-thread CPU, offering a base clock speed of 2.7 GHz and a boost clock speed of 4.2 GHz across all cores, and a whopping 288 MB of L2, L3 cache. This is a lot of computing power offered by a single CPU system. But Intel has a huge uphill battle when it comes to competing with these 32- and 64-core AMD Threadripper Pro systems from Lenovo. In the past, for anybody looking for a system under 16 cores, I would have recommended one of the Ryzen 5000 series CPUs. But Lenovo has really brought some options to the table that weren't available before. Let's move on to case and design of the system. And let's face it, out of the three major manufacturers, none of them have a very attractive case design. But the P620 does have your standard workstation look to it. 
Internally, the P620 does have a somewhat toolless design, and it does allow for easy installations of the SATA drives as well as removal of the power supply. And the door lock does have a nice spring-loaded mechanism, and that's a nice touch. For storage in the P620, it does have four of your standard 3.5-inch hard drive bays with an option to add two more, as well as it has six Gen 3 SATA connectors on the motherboard and two available slots for M.2 Gen 4 MVME drives. So let's talk about the thermal design. It does come with two case fans, one in the front and one in the back for a front-to-back exhaust, and the CPU is cooled with dual fans and a large heatsink. I would recommend that if you're going to install your own GPU in the system, look for a blower-style card, something that's going to exhaust out the back, and this will help keep your GPU cool. I'm not suggesting that the P620 is very loud. I just haven't put the system under a heavy load for long extended periods of time. I do keep asking myself, why the optical base? Although, there might be some people out there stuck in the year 2000 that might want to burn a disc once in a while. I believe that this whole compartment could have been removed to allow for some internal space for some SSD drive bays, or maybe a fan to keep the system cooler, but that's just my opinion. Let's take a quick look at the I.O. of the computer. In the front we have two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C's and two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A connectors. And of course a combo audio jack in the front. For the rear I.O., we have four USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A connectors and two USB 2.0 Type-A connectors, as well as three audio jacks, one for line out, line in, and mic, and these can be retasked to a 5.1 audio output. We also have two standard PS2 connectors, as well as a COM connector. For Ethernet, we do have one 10 gig connector on the back that supports 10G, 5G, 2.5, and 1 gig. There's also an available option for a Wi-Fi card that can be installed on one of the PCIe slots. So I want to talk about graphic cards. When it comes to graphic cards, one model or type of graphic card does not fit all situations. Video production, animation, compositing, and lighting, they all have their own requirements for GPU performance. Currently, Lenovo is offering a selection of NVIDIA Quadro cards as well as AMD Radeon Pro and the P620. Enough GPU power to dramatically improve your productivity. But for the smaller or boutique studios, it's rumored that the RTX 3000 series GPUs from NVIDIA will be available in the P620 in the next few months. With six Gen 4 PCIe slots and 128 PCIe lanes, the P6 can offer any arrangement of GPU configuration. There is physical room to install four single slot RTX 4000 GPUs or two larger GPUs like the RTX 8000 and utilize the NVLink. The P620 case even has room to install the triple slot GPUs like the RTX 3080 and the RTX 3090. I installed a 32 centimeter long GPU and it barely fit with about one centimeter of space, but it did fit comfortably. All right, enough of the tech specs of the system. Let's look at the performance data. Now these benchmarks are published by Lenovo and I look forward to completing my own comparisons and benchmarks in the next few weeks. At the time of this review, the only system that comes close to competing with the 64 core P620 Threadripper Pro ThinkStation is a dual Xeon 8280 workstation with a total of 56 cores. The 64 core Threadripper Pro crushes the dual Xeons in After Effects by 52% and an improvement of up to 25% in Premiere. The competition gap between Intel and AMD narrows a little when looking at the 12, 16, and 24 core systems in the SpecView benchmark. Even AMD's own Ryzen 9 5900X, a 12 core CPU, and the 5900X, a 16 core CPU, are good competition for the lower core Threadripper Pro CPUs. But in my opinion, the latest Zen 3 Ryzen desktop CPUs are at the end of their life cycle. Yes, we may see a refresh and a small bump with clock speeds like we did with the Zen 2 lineup, but in 2016, AMD did announce that the AM4 socket would be around for five years. Well, that time is up and AMD most likely will move to a new platform. But for studios or artists who want to purchase a workstation class system, they can now purchase a system with 12 or 16 cores at a very attractive price. And then in two or three years purchase, and hopefully at a reduced rate, a 32 or 64 core CPU and drop it into the system. All the P620 models use the same motherboard. So doing a CPU upgrade would be very simple. This is the upgrade path that I was referring to earlier on in the video and something that's just not possible with desktop class CPUs with Intel systems costing higher than the P620, smaller or boutique studios can now purchase a real workstation class system and get all the benefits that come with that. And this is what makes the P620 a very attractive choice when purchasing a graphic workstation and giving you a better return on your investment. So let's talk about who should be buying this P620. If you're an independent artist or freelancer and you're doing most of the production work yourself, buy whatever your budget can fit. The more compute power, the better. 
But for the studio environment, let's dive deeper into each department. For animation production, I would recommend a 12 or 16 core to a look dev department, as they require a really fast system that supplies real-time feedback when developing characters and environments, and most likely rendering locally on their workstation in order to be productive. I would also recommend a 12 core system to the final layout department. These artists tend to have more than one large complex 3D scene open at a time using XREF, and they need real-time interaction within the viewport. But also remember, Maya is still a single-threaded application when interacting within the program, so a fast CPU is still important. I would recommend using a 12 or 16 core system for anybody doing environments or matte painting. These artists tend to have many different software packages open at the same time, so they need a lot of RAM, CPU, and GPU. I would recommend a 16 or 32 core system for CFX artists that are doing hair, fur, or cloth as well as for VFX artists who are doing water or environment simulations. Maya's Bifrost or Houdini require systems with really high core counts and a ton of RAM to complete these complex simulations. Lighting artists require a 32 or a 64 core system because both Katana and Maya require a great deal of computing power in order to light a scene. And these artists need to render locally in order to work effectively and increase productivity. A lot of the same applies to VFX as it does to animation production. But I'd just like to note departments like MatchMove need a fast GPU and CPU in order to work effectively. Compositing is also a department that could use a 12-core CPU. Nuke is known for not dealing with high core count CPUs very effectively, but does need a very powerful GPU for accelerated tasks. I would recommend a 12 or 16-core CPU system for video production artists. There have been many reports that programs like Adobe's Premiere Pro has a limitation to the amount of CPUs that can be effectively utilized. But GPU acceleration does speed up some effects and encoding. So the GPU has a lot to do with productivity output. Adobe After Effects is a CPU-driven application, but the GPU is still important. So I would recommend a 16 or 32 core system for these artists. All I can say about DaVinci's Resolve is more is better. More RAM, more GPU, more CPU, more VRAM. This is really the only way to approach a Resolve system. Finishing and color work, needs to supply real-time feedback because time is money in these really expensive DI facilities, so faster is always better. I think it's really great that a company like Lenovo has taken the AMD Threadripper Pro processor and put it in a workstation class system. This is really going to give some options to the creative industry that just wasn't available before. And the best part about a competitive market is it allows creative professionals more options to configure a system that will fit their workflow, their specific requirements, and fit into any budget. I would like to see a small form factor motherboard created for a render node. It would be awesome to see four of these in a 2U unit so we could get up to 256 cores and 512 threads in one small form factor for rendering. I'll be following up this video with another video of a teardown and, and internal look into the P620, and then I'm going to do a video on benchmarking of the Threadripper Pro workstation, and I'll post those videos as soon as I get them completed. As with all my videos, these are just my opinions, but I am really interested to know what other people are doing and thinking when it comes to researching and purchasing equipment for the production industry. So please leave your thoughts in the comments section below. So if you like this video and you want to see more on production equipment and workflow, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, don't forget to smash that like button. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. So if you like this video, don't forget to watch the one we did on NVIDIA's RTX 3060 Ti to see if it's got enough power for the production industry.